Hello and welcome to the Remedy Fibers podcast, a podcast about knitting and crochet hosted by me, Jillian. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returner, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Today is a everything I made in 2022 video. Everything I knit and crocheted, including accessories, garments, pillows, hats, anything you could think of, I made it this year. So if you're interested, stay tuned. But if you're new here, I live in Northern California with my husband and dog Benny. I love everything yarn related and I hope you stay for my yarn journey. This was a record breaking year. I made 33 projects in the year of 2022. And I wanna give a big shout out to you because you encouraged me and inspired me to make all of these things find these new patterns, yarns, and designers, and it was really exciting to embark on this journey with you all. So this is everything that I made in 2022. I can't even fit everything on camera just because things are starting to fall, but I'll take you through what patterns I chose for 22, what inspired me, and hopefully inspire you all for some 2023 creations. So let's get started. Everything I talk about today, I also have documented on my Ravelry project page. So if you want to go back to specifics as to design, yarn, needle size, what size I made, all of that is going to be linked down below. But I'll try my best to kind of categorize what I made from the start of January all the way up into December with you right now. So the first project that I made in the start of 2022, January, were socks for my mom. This year was the first time that I've ever knit socks in my life, and so I actually mailed this to her. I used a modified version of the Rhinebeck Roomies, and this is just a plain vanilla sock. I was really proud of myself, and I really found that I enjoyed self-striping yarn, something that I want to continue into the next year. The second project that I made was actually for my friend's dog named Spud. He's such a cutie pie. I'll insert a picture here. But I made him a blanket called the Traveling Afghan Square. And this is a basket weave stitch made out of, I believe it was a type of velvet yarn. And his mom actually gave me the yarn. She said I bought this to knit something for someone and I decided not to do it. So she gifted me the yarn and then I gifted her back a blanket. And so she really enjoyed the blanket as well as her pup. I think he was seven months at the time when I made it for him. The third project that I made was really what hit it off for me jumping into garments this year. Even though I've been knitting for many years, I've never actually knit anything wearable for myself. So the first one was the Weekender sweater by Andrea Mari, and it was a bottom-up sweater. I also include a photo of me wearing it here. I just love the yarn. It was my first time going to a local yarn shop in California called Cloth Carousel. I actually have a video of me visiting that store if you want to watch that episode. But I just love it. The only downside is that it's very itchy. I believe it's BFL yarn. And wearing it does make me itch, but I go through it anyways because it's so worth it. And I did have to cinch the neckline a little bit more because I didn't want my bra strap showing. So this is me and my weekender. Of course, if you've been watching this podcast, you would know that my favorite color is purple. And so there's purple, beige, pink in here. I used five skeins of West Yorkshire spinners, the Croft and Aran Tweed. And this is my go-to sweater. I love it so much. I love the construction. I feel like it's very beginner friendly. And there's also a video on YouTube. If you just search the weekender, there's someone who takes you roughly through a step-by-step -step process because I found it confusing when I had had to start the arms and when I start when I had to bind off for the neck so she doesn't show you the pattern because it is a paid for pattern but she shows you the construction of it which kind of helps visually so this is it I love it so much the fourth project that I made this year were socks for my pottery teacher I took a pottery class for a few weeks I didn't enjoy it pottery is just not for me but as a thank you gift I made her self striping socks in some biscotti yarn that I think was in my stash back from New Jersey or Pennsylvania Pennsylvania and once again I really enjoyed working with self-striping socks with self-striping yarn and this was a modified version of the Rhinebeck Roomies I just omitted the pattern design that's on those socks and just made a plain vanilla socks I really like how these socks fit and her feedback was the socks fit her perfectly so I'm really happy that she enjoyed them 
The next project that I made was a throw for my office chair. It was just scrap yarn made into granny squares, sewed up together, and I don't have this anymore because I upgraded what's on my office chair and actually gifted this to one of my co-workers. So she has this granny square throw on her office chair, so every time I visit her, it's so cute and a little reminder of a way to use scrap yarn for a beautiful project. Next up, I have a seedling throw, so I use the crochet seedling stitch, and I just have this draped over one of the couches it has some big tassels at the end but at this point in the year I thought I wanted to create lots of blankets I did not <laughs> this was like one of two maybe blankets that I made this year they're fun but after a while I wanted to expand on my skill set but I think it's really cute for home decor I do like neutral colors and so Benny really uses this the most out of anyone I do appreciate every time you write a comment down below. So if you have any patterns that you're working on or you recommend for me to create next year, let me know right now because this is what my next project is. It's the Rocket Tee and I made it because one of you commented that I should make this. And so I pushed myself against my comfort zone. There were many times that I wanted to quit on this project and I'm really happy that I pushed through. So this is the Rocket Tee, let me try it on for you. So this is the Rocket Tee by Tannis Fiber Arts and I made the size 38. I used US 6 and I used 983 yards. This has a v-neck construction, something I've never done before, as well as striping, a short sleeve. The only downside is it's not really summer appropriate because of the mohair, I really get hot, but this is more of a transitional piece, so fall or early winter, spring, that type of climate. But I really like it. I love the color. I think that the mohair really complements the fingering weight. I really would recommend this pattern if you want to grow in your skill set, try mohair, try a v-neck construction, even an I-cord bind off. There were a lot of growing pains, <laughs> a lot of growing in my skill set with this pattern. So up next we have the Stitches West socks. This skein of fingering came from Stitches West as well as this yarn and I really enjoyed making self-striping socks of course you're probably not surprised at this point and once again this is a modified Rhinebeck Rumi's pattern. I just omit the pattern repeat and just do plain vanilla socks for the size. So I'll just show one foot just because it's a little bit uncomfortable where my location is. It is a gloomy rainy day so I had to switch where I normally podcast but these are the socks even though it takes me a long time to knit socks I really do enjoy the end products so next up I have a crocheted summer top this was a pattern that I found I lost it I had only created one panel of it and so I winged the back panel sewed it up together so it is from a pattern I don't know what pattern and a lot of people do ask me what pattern is this and sadly I'm not sure I didn't take good notes when it came to this so let me try it on for you so this is my summer crochet top I love the color of it I feel like it's a good neutral this I have the most wear out of one because it's really good for hot climates it's airy it's gorgeous and I use the lion brand true blue yarn in the silver colorway I used a five millimeter hook so each hook and it's really good to pair something underneath a tank top bralette anything and I just think that it's really cute stylish I pair it with leggings and I can also include a picture here so oftentimes we are so confused as to what to do with our scraps especially when they were expensive and we don't want to just gift them or throw them away so the next project that I made was kind of not really by a pattern I think I just winged it I made a scrap yarn pillowcase so I used fingering weight yarn for this as well as a E 3.5 millimeter hook so here is the pillow it's different from the front as well as the back and so I do have remnants of the fingering weight sock yarn that I created in early in the beginning of the year this has some of my rocket tee as you can notice this is from my self striping socks and I even added some mohair to it. So since it's been used, the yarn has stretched because I never blocked this. So it is a little bit bigger for what the pillow fits. But this is actually Benny's pillow. It's in his little bed. He sleeps on this. And the reason why I gave it to him was because I had it around the house. I wasn't really liking the color combination because it is a little bit loud and crazy. And he just kept laying on it. And everywhere I put it, he would find it. And so this is Benny's bed. Or part of his bed because he has a dog bed and then his little pillow which is this and so this is another way to use your scrap yarn creatively if you don't want to make one of the granny stripe blankets or granny squares you can make a pillowcase for maybe your pup 
One of my favorite designers is Nancy Ritchie, and so I created my third My Boy Lollipop. I highly, highly recommend this pattern, especially if you're a beginner knitter or just beginner in garments. Her patterns are so easy to read, so easy to understand, and she's highly responsive if you have questions or get stuck. So this is the third My Boy Lollipop that I created, and this one is modified, so it doesn't look exactly like the pattern. And because I made it for the third time, I wanted to make shorter sleeves, as well as longer ribbing on the bottom. Since I have finished it, I don't think that I would do this part again. I think I would make stockinette a little bit longer and decrease the amount of ribbing that I have just because on my body it does look a little bit strange the way that I modified it. So let me try it out for you. What I love about this pattern is that it's extremely versatile. You can have it off the shoulder, you can have it more of a t-shirt style, and I made another one of these later in the year, so I'll show you that up next. But I used US size 7 needles as well as Haiku Sueño Tweed in the Breathe Blue colorway. I love this color. I feel like it's really summer friendly, spring friendly. I also include a picture of me finding a plant that looks very similar to this colorway, and so I really enjoyed working on this it was such a fast knit I think I made this in two or three days just because of the bigger needle size the yarn I want to say this might be DK weight the pattern calls for a DK weight yarn so definitely highly recommend if this is something that you want as your entry point into knitting garments okay so the next one ah, I'm so excited to show this one I love this so much I made it twice but this pattern also attributes to you all commenting. Someone in the comments said that I should make this and so I pushed myself and did. It was so hard. It's not hard anymore because I know what to do now. But it, in the beginning it was so hard I couldn't wrap my mind around it. And this is the Summer Sorrow by Woolen Pine Designs. I love Woolen Pine Designs as a designer. They have video tutorials and as a visual learner, that was so helpful for me. So this is the Summer Sorrow. I cast this on June 14th and finished June 25th, so it was pretty quick knit. I used US 6 and I also knit the size 34. There is positive ease in this. This yarn was also picked up at Stitches West and this is a San Francisco dyer called seismic yarn and this yarn is in the topo colorway i love the pattern i love the fit i think i wanted to make a longer sleeve but i haven't quite done that yet the next one i will show you is a little bit longer sleeve than this i didn't knit this sleeve to pattern i was so impatient i wanted to cast off right away and so my only downsize is make sure you're following the pattern because it does have a weird bunching on the underarm part of it but that's not how the pattern was written I just cast off too soon so I would also recommend this but I would say it's a little bit intermediate or beginner intermediate because of this construction that was really hard for me to understand the short rows and the shaping and following the pattern repeat that was a little bit tricky for me in the beginning it's one of those accomplishment pieces like I never thought I could do it I pushed through and actually didn't so I just want to say thank you to the person who recommended this pattern for me to knit. Next up we have a Jessie Mae pattern, My Little Secret Crop Top. And this is inside out, so let me turn it out. So this is the tank top. I use Loops and Threads Cream Cotton One Skein. I did play Yarn Chicken when knitting this up. Sorry that the sports bra is getting in the way of the cuteness of this. Actually, let me see if I can... Actually, we're not going to do that, okay? So you get the gist of how it looks. This is one of my most worn pieces in the summer because it is cotton. It is very airy, breathable. It is a tank top. And I just really like wearing this with jeans. And it's just a fun, quick knit. I cast this on June 25th and finished July 8th. So I would say that was a pretty fast creation. And I just really love how the outcome came as well as the color of it. So I would recommend this as a beginner friendly garment. I don't know how I found this next pattern, but I love it. This is the Boardwalk Blouse by Poison Girls. And if you go on her Ravelry project page, it's not a pattern that she sells on Ravelry anymore. So you do have to go to her website. But I used three skeins of Haiku Skasu Kabasi DK. It has elastic in the yarn. And of course, purple is my color. And this pattern just makes me feel so retro, so vintage, so bougie. I'll include a picture of how I styled it when I finished it because it just made me feel like a vintage queen. So this is how the finished 
project looks. I think it fits so well. I think even Skatsu Kobasi reached out to me to see if they can feature my photo on one of their project pages. And I was really impressive. Like, of course, show me put me out and i just love the feel it's very stretchy because it has the elastic so the designer does say that if you're going to create this to really use the yarn she recommended or to use a yarn that has elastic in it because of the stretch and the way that she designed it so i would make one of these again i'm not quite sure what colors i did make a mistake i was supposed to knit the white in reverse and i Thought I was doing it wrong so if I was to do this again I would want to improve on how I'm doing the striping and holding the yarn so next up we have I'm actually not supposed to have this but it was returned to me in the mail and I need to send it back to my brother because I think I am I wrote down the wrong address but I created the frog I actually made three of these which after the third time I was like okay on to the next pattern but this is the famous frog pattern by Claire Garland I sent two to my sisters one to my brother which I gotta send this to him and I even created the frog sweater pattern for one of the frogs and I'll include a picture right here because I don't have that anymore and this is something that I want to continue into next year making more animals making more amigurumi me and i really enjoyed this pattern i think one of the frogs i made within a day or two is really fast to knit so up next we have the second my boy lollipop i really enjoyed this pattern because i modified it so much that it became more of a tee so it doesn't have that ribbing on the bottom and i also used terrapin fiber works she is a plant-based yarn dyer and i love her cotton this is actually in cotton and i got in on her one of a kind sale so that's why you kind of see a striping effect just because the dye lots didn't match but i knew that and i wanted to buy it anyways but i highly highly recommend her pin i love her work i love her colors and if you live in a warm or hot climate she does make cotton other summer fibers definitely check out her website but this is the my boy lollipop part four this is the fourth one that i made and let me try it on for you so this is my fourth my boy lollipop the only downside is i wish that i kept some of the scrap yarn just to make it a little bit longer it is long enough but it's a little bit more on the crop side but i just love the color i love the deep saturated purples in this and i would definitely continue to give all my monies over to terrapin thank you very much so in 2021 i created a ripple halter by jesse may i ran out of yarn i never wore it so i ripped it apart and made a new jesse may pattern called the framework bralette and this is how it looks the downside of this pattern of not having it longer is also it's a constant it's a constant for me i get so excited i just want to cast off and i wish i had a little bit more yarn of this just to make it a little bit longer at this point in time i used a us4 and i believe i was supposed to use a us3 for the ribbing i didn't have a us3 at the time and so i do wish that this was a little bit more cinched on my body but i will try this on for you as well so this is the framework bralette i love how it fits i just wish that it was a little bit longer and when i do actually wear it sometimes it does rise up a little bit so throughout the day i have to kind of push it down and i think that's just because maybe i put the straps too tight they could have been a little bit longer as well as using the us3 to have a tighter ribbing on the bottom just so that it could kind of prevent that so if i was to do this again i would actually follow the pattern and not be so quick to cast off next up of course i have my felix cardigan this i'm most proud of this cardigan one because i never created a cardigan before two one of you recommended that i create this so thank you again and three i used california yarn from the what was that festival called oh the wine country yarn hop I think it was the wine country yarn hop i also have a video of me exploring that you can watch it here but this was from the wine crunchy yarn hop i used sincere sheep merino alpaca and i got this yarn at the fiber circle studio in petaluma california i love this yarn the only thing it is a little bit itchy but normally i'm wearing something under it not just a sports bra and it's the first time that i did a picked up hemline button band buttons ah i was obsessed with this project i cast on august 13th and finished august 26th and i also had covid during this sweater so it has a lot of memories it's such a great knit the only downside is 
I wear it so much it's starting to pill, so I do need one of those vacuum pillar remover things. It has large needles, US 8, US 10, and I just really, really love making this. I never want to take it off. Next up, one of my co-workers made crocheted scrubbies for their face, and so I decided to make some too. So I have a lot of crocheted scrubbies. They're here somewhere, but they just fell on Benny stole one. But I use these to exfoliate my face. I have them in brown, black, as well as orange. But this is 100% cotton. I use Lily Sugar and Cream Solids and Denim. And I had so much of this yarn left that I did gift it away. But it was really fun to make. I just throw it in the wash when they all get all dirty and filthy. Next up, I made my first ever coffee cozy. I will include a picture here because I gifted them away to my three co-workers and supervisor. And they loved it. It was so cute and precious. I did want to keep one for myself, but I didn't have enough yarn. And I said I can always make one in the future. So they all really appreciated it and even bought their pumpkin spice lattes, put their cozy on it, and used it to the month of October. Next up, I knit a hat for Bright before he left to Spain. This is the 2x2 hat by Anne Gagnon. I use it, I use, this is my go-to 2x2 hat pattern. It's free, it's easy to follow. I've been using it for years. So we went to Oakland and we visited a verb for keeping warm. This is in the Horizon base and it is in a very dark indigo navy blue. He picked out this yarn. He said, oh, that yarn is really nice. And so I got two skeins of it, knit him a hat. It's so warm. He wears it all the time. Every time I call him on FaceTime, he's always wearing this hat and the other hat that I made for him. But I knew that it was gonna be much colder in Spain than in California. So I wanted him to leave with a hand knit hat for his travels. I also created a matching hat with the leftover yarn, even though this wasn't the next project, I'm gonna skip the line. But this is another two by two hat. It does not have a brim because I ran out of yarn and I also blocked it. Normally I don't block my hats, but I needed a little bit more length to cover my ears. And I did play yarn chicken and lost. I ran out of yarn and have some gray yarn here, but you can't really see that. And I wanted to add a pom pom, I just haven't got around to it. But this is also in the indigo yarn. We wear our matching hats. We have matching hats. It feels really precious and special to us And it also is a reminder for when we visited the Oakland yarn shop next up I have more scrubbies. This is the one that I was talking about that it's a different pattern But it has that bullseye look and that's how the pattern was intended to be written So I also use these to house my plants on top of them But they can also be used as face scrubbies because they're still 100% cotton I also created a pumpkin for the very first time. I knit a big one and a small one with the leftover yarn for my scrubbies. And this one, originally I had in my office for the month of October. And then as October was ending, I don't like to hold on to things. So I gifted this away to one of my staff members. So next up, we have my second summer sorrel. I purchased this yarn when I was visiting my family back in North Carolina over the summer. And this is Ba Yarn by La Jolla. And I love it. I love the summer sorrel. I told you the video tutorials are really helpful this time i actually knit the sleeves longer than the last one because i learned my lesson i wanted to knit a long sleeve version but i just ran out of yarn i only had two skeins of this yarn so let me try it out for you so this is how the summer sorrel looks i had to go up a needle size to meet gauge but you can see the sleeves fit a lot better than that scrunching up on the underarm that the other one was and i just think that this color complements me more the downside about the other summer sorrel i feel like even though i really love the color it kind of washes me out so this one is a little bit more vibrant a little bit more colorful and this is one of my go-to designs to wear throughout the year even if it's hot i'll still wear this even though it's wool i'll still wear it in the summer i am committed but it is really warm it can get really warm but what i really love is this yarn is so soft and luxurious sometimes it feels like i'm not even wearing anything that's how soft and comforting it is so i want to say last year i tried to create a lilon stitch pattern i bought a kit at five below a store local to me and i never got the hang of it and this year i was encouraged and pushed to try it even if i failed so this is my 
stitch he is so cute or she's so cute i'm not quite sure i put this little bow just because i couldn't get the ears right and i also ran out of yarn to finish the ears but this is how it looks i'm going to gift this to my sister she wants it but i just think it's so adorable i want to get in some more amigurumi it's just a little bit out of my comfort zone i do want to create a teddy bear that i saw i saw it as a pattern recommendation and then i also saw it on another podcaster's channel but the yarn is sold out everywhere i think it's actually discontinued so i do want to make some teddy bears in the future for 2023 this year was monumental because I did finally buy a spinning wheel. If you've been watching the podcast, you know that I've had a spinning wheel when I lived in New Jersey, but I had to sell it when I did the cross-country trip. So I invested in a vintage 1970s Ashford wheel. Originally, this is not the wheel that I wanted to go for, but it was on sale. It was a working wheel, and I didn't know if I really wanted to go into spinning, so I didn't want to go into that price point of very high amount of dollars to invest in something that i wasn't really going to commit to so i wanted to try it out and that's why i invested in a spinning wheel especially a vintage and older spinning wheel so long story short i love spinning it's definitely going to be a long-term craft of mine but at the Lambtown festival i purchased some roving and i even spun my own hat so i purchased the yarn at the wanderlust booth it's two ply i don't know if it has a colorway but it's a two by two hat by ann gadnan but without the brim because i think i just didn't want a brim and so this is how it looks since i've been wearing it, it has stretched out a little bit i don't think that i blocked this but it has kind of grown sometimes when i'm riding my bike it kind of goes over my eyes but i really enjoyed this hat it's so beautiful i feel like it has such a unique look to it and it just gives me so much pride because i spun my own yarn and i made a hat into it I promise I do have the second mitt, I just can't find it right now. But because of the extra yarn, I made a fingerless mitt to match and I was really happy that I had a matching set. So I used a modified version of the fingerless mittens by Silvana and the reason why I did is because I have really tiny hands, my family calls me baby hands and so I didn't need that much length. The only thing that I would do in the future would make the finger part maybe a little bit taller and make it a little bit more cinched. But overall, I'm really happy. I wear these all the time. I would want to make full fingers, full coverage for 2023 just because when I am riding my bike, my hands get really cold when I'm having them bike like that. So I have a matching set. It's so cute and I'm really proud because I knit this yarn, I spun this yarn, and just a great accomplishment. One thing that I was worried about in the past when I had a spinning wheel is I would spin the yarn and I never would create anything with it. So I said if I'm going to buy a spinning wheel, I'm going to use the yarn even though sometimes I don't have a consistent spin. I don't know what weight I'm using and how I'm spinning it. We're just going to make it work and see how it goes. So that's one thing that I really like about hand spun yarn. So next up we have the Madrid hat. This is what I named it, but it's also a 2x2 two two and Gagnon pattern. I knit this hat for Bright when I was in Spain with him and gifted it to him before I left and it's so special to me because I spun the yarn for the hat it's the warmest hat he's ever had he wears this one more than the other one that I made him he wears it pretty much daily and he really does say that he likes this one better than the other one and I think it's because I spun it but also the color he really likes the gray color and I think it's just so gorgeous this 2x2 two two hat pattern is so versatile because you can make it kind of like a beanie hat or you can fold up the brim and have a brimmed hat. So it's really cute, it's gorgeous and I also made a matching pattern that I'll show you next. So the yarn that I spun for Bright's hat is the same yarn that I used to create this headband. And I purchased this wool at the Meridian Jacobs Farm. It's a two-ply, it's DK weight, and it's headband with a twist by Morella Moments. Started it October 3rd and cast off October 7th. It's extremely warm. It is on the itchy side just a tad bit, but I'm really happy because not only did I knit a headband, but I knit it with yarn that I spun. Next up, I have a monumental garment that I made in 2022, and it is my first ever crocheted garment. So this is the full pullover sweater by Juanita Juncker, and I'm not quite sure how I found her pattern because originally this yarn, I bought it from North Carolina. It is Adirondack fingering cotton weights, and I was going to use this for a test knit. That didn't work out and I was really disappointed so I was looking for a fingering weight cotton pattern and somehow I found this one on Ravelry 
and there is a video tutorial the pattern is really clearly written especially as a new garment creator in crochet and i love the fit i love the drape it actually smells really good i think i put perfume on this but let me try this on for you one thing that i really love about crochet is because you're only creating with one hook it's so easy to try it on throughout the process so i tried it on when i just had the yoke i tried it on when i was up to here all the way to how long i wanted it to be when it blocked it did grow out beautifully and so this is how the sleeves look i love that bell shape i love love everything about it normally I have to wear a tank top or a sports bra under it just because it is a little bit see-through but I love the color this colorway is cherry and I used a 3.5 millimeter e-hook and I used two skeins of the cherry red I believed I used all of the yarn because crochet does take up a lot of yarn but I love it this was my holiday sweater this is when I want to feel fabulous the color just really complements me and I do want to knit with more vibrant bold colors in 2023 but also with more red all right next up i have another pair of socks for me this yarn i picked up in santa cruz we had a work retreat and i was able to run and escape to the yarn shop so if you want to see that video i also have it linked here but this is a modified ankle version of the rhinebeck roomies and this is my favorite pair of socks that i've made so far today one because it's ankle length two because the colors are so beautiful this colorway is actually called unicorn dreams or unicorn vomit <laughs> i can't remember what color it was because it wasn't listed in a rivalry so i think i just put unicorn dreams but i love how colorful it is even though it's a little bit muted because of the black and i can try this on for you as well but i wear these so much that they're so worn through you can tell that they're so worn through so this is how the pattern looks it fits so great and i just really love wearing these all the time okay last but not least let's get a drum roll i created my folklore cardigan by taylor swift if you've been watching the last three episodes this is all i've been working on all i've been talking about and i created this cardigan for my co-worker my friend who loves taylor swift so let me get it out for you so you can see it i feel like we ended 2022 with a bang since this is the last probably the last thing i'll have for the year since we only have a week left I know you were trouble when you walked in. Shame on me now. I sing that song to motivate myself when I was finishing this cardigan. Even though that's not her latest music, that's like the only song I know. So this is the folklore cardigan based on my research. Taylor Swift created an album called Folklore. She created a song called Cardigan and i think this was part of her merch it got sold out everybody wanted one all the swifties as my mom told me that they're called so my friend she was inspired to get into knitting because of me of course and she took a knitting class and she was like look at these new knitters have made this folklore cardigan isn't that crazy and i'm like wow that's intense for a new knitter like someone who just learned and then jumps right into folklore cardigan some of us have never even made a cardigan let alone with cables let alone with a button band like there's so much skill sets built upon as a new knitter to just jump right into so more props to them but i was also impressed and also felt a little challenged she mentioned the cardigan to me two times and i was like you know what i'm gonna make this for her so i went on i think it was joanne's they had the wool ease on sale so originally i think the price was like 50 60 dollars and i got it for about 30 dollars and i bought six skeins of the wool ease in the fisherman colorway and two skeins of the black disclaimer you only need one ball of the black i don't know why the pattern recommends two i knit the large slash extra large size for this and i also used i think it was us 8 i didn't put my needles here maybe i'll update that i do know that i had to go up a needle size to knit this so this is a seam sweater you knit the back you knit the two fronts you knit the sleeves you seam everything together and so this is how the sweater looks i do need to get the buttons i need three buttons and taylor swift's cardigan has the little stars on the elbow so i do need to get that i asked her if she wanted it because then it could just be like you know a regular go-to cardigan then taylor swift cardigan but i think she does want the stars but at first i was really critical but after seeing it and wearing it and looking at the pictures i'm obsessed 
like is she gonna get this i don't know yeah i'm gonna give it to her i'm gonna give it to her but i even think it's so cute as like an off the shoulder look like a cozy mm, i'm so proud of this i definitely see cables in 2023 not for a while because I just cast this off a few days ago. But I do see more cardigans in my future. They're so versatile. You can throw them on, throw them off. Especially because the way our climate change is going, sometimes you're going to have to be prepared with tank tops, sweaters, boots, everything. So I want more cardigans for next year. But that's all I made for 2022. Just a little bit, right? No, that's a lot. 33 projects I have kept busy from knitting to crochet to trying socks to trying cardigans to crocheting face scrubbies and I'm a roomies. This was a year for many firsts and I'm really excited to challenge myself, push myself on things that I would normally want to just do mindless knitting or crochet and try things that will help me boost my confidence because this was definitely a confidence booster and just continue to be inspired by all of you everything that you're making and creating as well as the podcasting community they're all fabulous and inspiring as well so thank you so much for tuning in don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content because i will be coming back at y'all in 2023 with more videos but i really do appreciate you all for tuning in i hope that you and your family are happy healthy and safe happy new year to you all and i'll see you in 2023. Take care. Bye. I'm better on the other side